Welcome to a lesson on subgraphs and induced subgraphs. Before we look at the formal definitions, let's look at the notes below. We can think of a subgraph as a result of deleting some vertices and edges from a larger graph. So for example, if we have the graph of G below, we can form a subgraph by deleting some vertices and edges. For example, if we delete this vertex, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge, we have a subgraph of G shown here in the middle. For the subgraph to be an induced subgraph, we can still delete vertices, but now we can only delete those edges that included the deleted vertices. So for example, looking at the work that we showed here to form the subgraph of G, if we want an induced subgraph of G, we can no longer delete this edge here because, because it doesn't include the deleted vertex. So if we don't delete or remove this edge here, we have the graph shown here on the far right, which is an induced subgraph of G. So all these notes are a nice way to get an intuitive feel for a subgraph and an induced subgraph. There are cases where we can't just delete any vertex and any edge to form a subgraph. And we'll see an example of that in a couple of minutes. And now let's look at the formal definitions. We say that the graph of G prime, which is equal to the ordered pair V prime comma E prime, is a subgraph of the graph of G, which is equal to the ordered pair V comma E, and we write G prime is a subgraph of G provided V prime is a subset of E and E prime is a subset of E. Remember V prime is the set of vertices of G prime and V is a set of vertices of G. And E prime is the set of edges of G prime and E is the set of edges of G. Also notice we're using subset notation here, but when referring to the graphs, we say G prime is a subgraph of G. Next, we say that G prime is an induced subgraph of G, provided V prime is a subset of V and every edge in E whose vertices are still in V prime is also an edge in E prime. Let's look at some more examples. Let's consider the graphs below and determine if G2, G3, and G4 are subgraphs and induced subgraphs of G1, the first graph. Let's start with G2. Notice the set of vertices of G2 is a subset of the set of vertices of G1, and the set of edges of G2 is also a subset of the set of edges of G1, indicating G2 is a subgraph of G1. Or more informally, we can say G2 is a subgraph of G1 because we can form the graph of G2 by deleting vertex F and vertex E as well as the edges D, F, E, F, D, E, C, E, and B, E. And G2 is also an induced subgraph of G1. If we take a look at the work that we just used to form the graph of G2, notice how the only edges that we deleted included the deleted vertices, indicating G2 is an induced subgraph of G1. Or more formally, we can say, G2 is an induced subgraph of G1 because every edge in G1 that connects the vertices in G2 is also an edge in G2. And now let's take a look at the graph G3. Once again, notice the set of vertices of G3 is a subset of the set of vertices of G1, and the set of edges of G3 is a subset of the set of edges of G1. This indicates G3 is a subgraph of G1. Notice to form the graph of G3 from G1, we delete vertex E, as well as the edges E, F, D, E, B, E, E, C, and A, B. Now notice that G3 is not an induced subgraph of G1 because edge A, B has been removed to form G3, and edge A, B does not include the deleted vertex vertex E. So again, we have G3 is a subgraph of G1, and G3 is not an induced subgraph of G1, more formally because the edge AB is in E1, the set of edges for the graph of G1, but not in the set of edges of G3, even though the vertices A and B are in V3. And now let's take a look at the graph of G4. This is where we have to be careful about the informal notes. Notice to form the graph G4 from G1, we delete vertex E as well as edge DE and edge BE. So it may appear as if 
G4 is a subgraph of G1, but it's actually not because if we take a close look at G4, notice how the set of edges of G4 includes the edge CF, but the edge CF is not an edge in the set of edges of G1, and therefore G4 is not a subgraph of G1. And if it's not a subgraph, it also can't be an induced subgraph. So once again, we can say the graph of G4 is not a subgraph of G1, even though it looks like all we did is remove vertex E. The reason is that in E4, the set of edges of G4, we have the edge CF, but this is not an element of E1, the set of edges of G1, so we don't have the requirement that E4, the set of edges of G4, is a subset of E1, the set of edges of G1. If G4 is not a subgraph, then it also can't be an induced subgraph. I hope you found this helpful.